Welcome to Auburn Community Television and this episode of Meet the Artist. Meet the Artist is supported by the North Auburn Artist to introduce artists in our local community. Today our guest is Monica Wilson. I am particularly excited about this interview because we are going to be dealing with wax, pigment, and fire. So let's get on so we can meet Monica and have a demo of how she does in caustics. Welcome, Monica. I'm so glad that you could join us. Well, thanks for coming by, Lucinda. Well, I've been particularly excited about meeting with you, and we had was supposed to see you a few months ago, so I really appreciate you for rescheduling us so we could be here today. No problem. One of the things that is absolutely incredible about your art is that you take regular pigment and then create these amazing layered looking pieces in a process that I don't think a lot of people hurt, hear about, which is encaustic. Mm -hmm. So why don't you describe a little bit what encaustic is as a starting point? Okay. Um, encaustic painting, it's an ancient art form, started way back with the Egyptians, and it's a combination of mostly beeswax and a little bit of damar resin, which keeps the beeswax um, when it, when it um, solidifies it keeps it really really hard and um, non-porous mm -hmm. so the the ancient Egyptians originally used it to um, seal boat hole holes you know um, to make things watertight eventually they started adding pigment and making it more um, you know artistic and it's developed into what we have today so I start off with um, an encaustic medium, which is mostly beeswax and a little bit of Damar resin. And then I will add various pigments to that encaustic medium to get the, any color you can think of. I like to use mostly bright, happy mm -hmm. colors, but a lot of other artists use more muted earth tones. So you, and there are so many different processes and techniques with encaustic painting. Now, how Sorry. long have you been doing this? Um, probably encaustic painting, about six years or so. Did you do other forms of art before you started the encaustic? Yeah, I've, I've always dabbled um, in different things. I did watercolor paintings, I've made jewelry, um, always throughout the years, different types of arts and crafts. What drew you then to encaustic? Um, well, I've, I took my first class, it, it had to have been about six years ago, mm -hmm. and I really didn't know much about it, and I walked into the room where the teacher was teaching about 20 students, and immediately my heart just started pounding. You get to use a blowtorch, <laughs> <laughs> you, and there are just so many different ways that you can manipulate the, the medium. We're going to be talking about some of those as we look through your artwork, and there are. There are just so many different things that you can do with it. So had you heard about encaustic before you decided to take this class? I, I had, um, but I wasn't really that familiar with mm -hmm. it. I, um, I went to an art show. It was probably 20 years ago, and there was an encaustic painting there. I didn't know that that's what it was called. I could tell that it was made with wax some sort of wax mm -hmm. and it was different and funky and weird and I'd never seen anything like it and I was with my husband and I immediately said I have to have that and so I bought it about 20 years ago and then years later I took the class and I thought okay this is what that painting was that I bought all those years ago and in the last five years or so I've really seen a lot of, um, it, it's becoming more and more common. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing more and more artists use the technique and, and the, the process. I certainly do see a lot of it here in Placer County, and I actually credit it to some of the earlier artists that were using it and giving their classes and mm -hmm. like bringing you in and mm -hmm. get just creating that excitement about this particular medium. Yeah. And so I think it has grown a lot. I've been here for 10 years and yes, there's a lot more, a lot of, a lot of more, a lot more artists <laughs> yeah. are doing this. Yeah. And it's, what's really been nice in the Placer community, I've gotten to meet so many of these artists 
who are using encaustic mediums. And it's like we're our own little tribe sometimes. Uh, when you meet someone and they're, they're doing encaustic painting, you're immediately are drawn to each other and mm -hmm. you talk about what techniques you use, what your, what your inspirations are, how um, your paintings and your work end up. And no two are the same. Every artist I've met has a different style. Do you find that a lot part of it is problem solving in terms of I have an idea and now how do I go about using this process to create that? Yes. And it, your first few tries, it never turns out the way you envisioned. Um, I'll have an idea in my mind, it's kind of percolating for a while and I'll try it out and sometimes it's completely different or you end up going in a different direction than what you originally thought. And that's how you find new styles and techniques. Now it is it something that you can work on a little bit and then walk away and then come back or does it have to all be done in the same setting? Oh no, you can um, pick it up and let it rest for a while if you'd like. Uh, I have paintings, I've there's one particular painting. Uh, it probably took me about four years to finish. It just, okay. um, it was a very large, ambitious piece. And you would do some work on it, let it sit, look at it, decide it needed a little tweaking. And then you can immediately pick up that blowtorch and re-melt re that wax. This, I can tell this is a medium I would love then. It's fun. <laughs> I have a hard time staying at my easel for great lengths of time, which is why I've stayed away from particularly acrylic painting and watercolor. Mm -hmm. uh, because I like to work in a little bit, step away from it, let it kind of bubble up in what's mm -hmm. going on, come back and look at it again. Yeah. And that's, I, I think that makes it a lovely, wonderful medium to work in then. It, it is. Um, and, and like I said, you, you can pick something up a year later and add to it or subtract from it much now, later. What if you think that it's not coming out exactly the way you want it and you want to change it? Because it's wax, can you, you, can you scrape that wax off? Can you completely take it off and start all over again? So what happens in those if that happens? Well, there, there's a few, there's a, two main ways you can do that. Um, you can either reheat the wax and scrape it all off, um, which I always think is kind of a shame to do because there's all that work there. <laughs> or you can add more to it. Just mm -hmm. keep adding more and more layers to, to, the, to the painting. Some of my paintings have over 30 layers of wax wow. on them. I know we're going to be looking at some of those. It seems like you build up and build up mm -hmm. and build up. Um, so how long does it take for that wax to cool down? Um, it depends on how large the piece is and how many layers of wax. So the larger the piece, um, it's, it's going to stay warm mm -hmm. for a very long time. And if your bottom layers are very warm to start off, the, the upper layers are going to take longer to cool off too. So it's best to um, keep working while it's warm, but let it let five, 10, 20 minutes in between each layer to cool off. Well, let's start looking at some of the artwork that you've going okay. to be sharing with us today because I, it does explain, actually show, these different techniques yeah. that you've talked about a little bit, and then you can add some to it as we go through okay. the various pieces. Um, so you have one that's right to your right there. So let me take that one first, and I think I have one of those too. So this, yeah, those are similar techniques. Okay. So, so these, these, um, I almost always start off with a um, like a, a white background, and then I'll add different colors and pigments to, to it. Um, you can tell it almost looks like an ocean, um, and that's used with a blowtorch. So I will paint the wax on and really blast it with a torch, and I might um, move the panel around. These are always done on wood panels to kind of get the flowy techniques. 
I'm going to interrupt. So if they're on wood panels, do you have to prep that wood panel in any way? No. Okay. Just right off the shelf. Okay. Pretty much. Yeah. Um, and this one in particular, it's kind of hard to see. I've really built see up the the texture. The, um, the texture. Um, I started off with um, I, I put some really dark and bright blues on the entire panel, and then I built up white over different parts of the panel to kind of hide the brightness mm -hmm. of the blue. And so you can just see the blue kind of peeking out through that. And it's, I always encourage people to go ahead and touch it. You're not yeah. gonna hurt it. Um, it's, it's 3D almost. Now that's something we can talk about here too. So obviously dust is gonna settle on these because these are not behind uh, mm -hmm. glass. So how do you go about cleaning them? Keep... Just with a soft cloth. Yeah, it's, don't use any cleaners or anything. You know, just use a soft cloth to buff it out every every few months or so. Mm -hmm. Dust it. And I think they're just lovely. Let's see what else we have. I'm trying to see what I have around um, me. There's, do you want to, I can show you a shellac burn? Yes. Okay. So this piece, there's quite a few techniques going on. Um, I started off with just a lot of crazy bright colors. And it, it's a little, it was a little too crazy to put on the wall. So um, I, I put white over it to kind of mute it. Um, but you can still see, do you see this black spider webbing right. effect? That's called a shellac burn. So um, I'll just buy regular wood shellac and you can pigment it to any color you would like with dry pigment. This, I just made it black. You paint on a shellac and take a blowtorch to it at a very low heat and you just burn the shellac and it creates this really cool spider webbing effect. And you can just kind of see that poking through the white paint. Now in this one you have put in a frame, mm -hmm. um, but again, the painting itself is on the wood. Yes, and then it's a wood just... panel that I've mounted to the backing here. Yeah. Do you have a name for this one? <laughs> Uh, or do you I, name I, them? I, I, I do name some of them. I, I, think, I think this one was called uh, Dragonflies. Mm -hmm. um, there's, there's a few dragonflies. Clearly there's one hidden here, or right up front. But there's a few more hidden, and you have to look for it. Uh -huh. Yeah. This one also, it has a piece of paper. It's, um, uh, it's a page from a book that I really like that's been embedded in the wax. So you can take paper or any porous um, material and really embed it in the wax. So then you have your wax and then you put whatever you want to, like the paper, and then you come over it again with a clear wax then? Correct, okay. yeah, yeah. Well, that's fascinating. Yeah, this is a fun one. Tell me about this one. Oh, I like hearts. They're just kind of happy and fun and you know, it, it, they're, they're nice gifts to mm -hmm. give to people too. You know, let someone know that you're thinking of them. So th this is another um, one where I used some really bright, crazy colors. And I did another shellac burn there that you can see. And I basically poured the white encaustic medium on top. And I used um, a flat iron to flatten it out. And this one too is it's kind of sculptural. Um, you can feel yes. the bumps and, and the texture. Um, and you know there's there's uh, there's some gold leafing on the side, and just to give how, it a little interest. So how did you do the gold leafing then? Um, First off, is was it before or after the wax went on? Oh, after. Okay. Yeah, I always trim out the sides at the very end. That's about the last step that mm -hmm. I do. Um, there's different ways to do that. I have physical gold leaf that you can just press on, or there's um, a shimmery paint, a pigment that mm -hmm. I can brush on. And after every layer, every technique, every little bit of oil paint that goes on, you can also oil paint it on, you always finish it off with the, the blowtorch, and that really seals it to the wax. 
Have you ever combined the encaustic painting with like acrylic paint or oil paint? Um, acrylic paint is not a compatible medium. Okay. Uh, it'll just float right off of the, oh, of the wax. Yeah, so that's always a no-no. But oil paint, yeah. Uh, so oil paint is very frequently used with encaustic medium. Um, you can use bits of oil paint to pigment mm -hmm. your encaustic medium. You can paint right on it. Um, this one right here is, um, there's some oil paint directly on this one. These little birds flying out. Um, you, you can just physically paint on it very thin layers. And then you always finish it with the blowtorch. Now, when you do a finishing it off, do you do just an entire clear wax over it or it just leaves it with the last layer you did? Just leave it with the last layer that you did. Okay. Yeah. Now with this particular one, there's just these very fine uh, branches and stuff in it. So how did you get those onto this? Well, there's, there's two different techniques that I used on this particular painting. Uh, one was an image transfer, which we haven't talked about yet, and the other is physically oil paint with a very fine brush. So you can take any, anything that you can print from a toner-based printer. It can be a portrait of a photo that you've taken or some clip art that you find online or any kind of photograph. Mm -hmm. Transfer it into um, black and white and print it on a toner-based printer in a reverse image lay the image on the very warm wax, rub it off, and then the ink, the, the warmth of the wax will release the ink from the paper and put it directly onto the, uh, the painting. So we have some more of those where you've used that transfer. Mm -hmm. So why don't we take a look at those? Sure. This one? Yeah. So this is a cute little guy, he's, um, the bird is an image transfer of a stock image I found, and on top of that shellac burn. Mm -hmm. So you can see I've used the shellac burn, I've painted over it a little bit to make it look like a branch, and then I used a, a, a photo that I had of a bird, and you know, just trans put it, laid it right onto the warm wax, then you rub the paper off mm -hmm. when it's cooled, and the heat of the wax will release the ink directly onto it. I love and about this one is you have, like with the feathers, it almost has that feathering effect. So did you go in and try to, do, with the brush or anything, to get that kind of a more loose? Yeah, you, you can. Um, you can, if you use a, there's different, techniques you mm -hmm. can scrape away some of the the ink that's been left if you don't like the harsh lines I can use the blowtorch to uh, heat it up a little more and it kind of blurs the lines or a lot of times what I'll do is I'll take a very translucent layer of wax and put it right over um, to soften mm -hmm. the lines let me put that one just down there and this is going to be another one that explains the transfer, but it also yeah. has a very unique mm -hmm. uh, way that you've done the wax behind it. This one I call the queen bee. Um, yes, yeah, so I did the, uh, the shellac burn. I did mm -hmm. a lot of shellac burn all over the painting. Um, then uh, over the initial layers, I put on a few more layers of translucent encaustic medium over to really blur it. I didn't, I didn't want a harsh um, spider webbing effect. And then I, I just got some images of a crown and a, and a bee and I put them right on top. Now, how'd you get the edging like you have on this one? It's almost like a burn type of look around it. That I used, I used a, um, uh, a dry pigment that it was very shimmery, metallic shimmery. Mm -hmm. And I just painted it on the sides, and then you use your blowtorch to heat it on, and it creates kind of a, a soft uh, frame around it. 
Well, I can see where you're, you can do a lot of different things with this medium, which I never thought would you yeah. possibly do. And I also think I'm just going to call you the blowtorch queen. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I can just see you here now on the blowtorch. It's fun. Well, let's go watch how some of this is okay. done and um, you giving us a demonstration. Sounds great. Thank you. Now we're going to move on to the exciting part of this interview, and Monica is going to give us a demonstration of how she uses her encaustic paint, painting. Oh. And we're going to go through a series. And first thing I would like you to do is tell us exactly what we're seeing here on your workplace. Okay. So this is my workspace. Um, it's a very large table with lots of wax drippings on top. And um, I have Blow torches. I always have a fire extinguisher just, you know, to keep things safe. Um, and I have my two grills that keep the wet and caustic medium nice and warm. So uh, keeps it fluid and, and I can keep painting. So this keeps it at a constant temperature. Um, so in caustic medium, it starts off in just these little pellets and it is. 85, this is a mixture of 85% beeswax and 15% DeMar resin. And so it starts off pretty much clear, translucent, and I usually um, melt a, like a nice big pot of this, and this is the base for all of, all of the paint. And then what I'll do is I'll add pigment to the little pots to make them any color you can think of. Um, here I have a, a nice violet dry pigment and what I'll do is I will just add just a smidge and it really creates and then you stir, stir, stir for the longest time and I will create a really nice shade of, of violet and I can add more um, pigment to it to make it a brighter shade or I can add a little white to make it a little more pale. Uh, titanium white makes it really opaque. Um, and if I want to keep it translucent, I'll just add more translucent type pigments. So you can see I've turned a very white encaustic medium into the beautiful shade of a lavender violet. And I can use this as a base for a million other colors as well. So that's pretty much how I make my pigments. Then what I'll do is I will start with just a plain wood panel. And I, you can buy these at any um, artist craft supply shop or uh, the larger panels. Uh, my husband will make them for me. Get kind of lucky there. So. What I'll do is I always start with a, a clear encaustic medium. And this just paints right on the top. I think I'll put it right here. And you just paint a layer of clear over the entire panel. Get a nice, thick, first layer of encaustic medium. Keep it as smooth as you can. And then, fire up your temple of torch. So that's a pretty high heat. So I might turn it down just a little bit. And then, this heat just fuses the encaustic medium to the wood panel. So there, and I'm not sure if you can see how this is liquefied. I'll leave it there for a couple of minutes and let it cool down and as it uh, solidifies, cools down and solidifies you can see it turning a little more uh, opaque 
and you can just actually see the hot melted wax just cooling off and solidifying. So this small panel, I've already put a layer of white uh, in caustic medium. So I've, I already put a, a couple layers of the clear and a couple layers of the white. So I think I'm going to add some, you know, prettier colors to it, get a little more interesting. Um, I always like pink, a nice bright shade of pink. So I might just start pink there. And maybe I'll add um, another favorite is this phthalo green. This is a very translucent shade of phthalo green, but I always think they look well, to look nice together. And maybe a little navy blue to ground it. And mind you, this is just one of many layers. So I can add minimum of 10 layers, sometimes up to 30 or more. So we're going to melt that back on again with my blowtorch. And this is where you can really see the colors just blurring and blending into each other. And this is a little dangerous, but it creates a good effect where you can really just start twisting and bending and it really creates almost like, like waves. And I'll just let that dry for a few minutes, let it cool off. I love the way that the colors have blended in there and just it's, it's totally different than when you painted it. Yeah, when you when you just paint on the paint, it's, it's kind of gloppy, not very artistic. And this is what really sets it apart. And just see, you can already tell just in that short amount of time, it's solidifying. It's still warm to the touch. Um, but you can create a few different crazy colors. Um, now what I might do, it's still warm, I'll add a little bit of white. So that will kind of soften the effects of the crazy pinks and just give it a little more depth. Now is this wax? Can it burn you, or is it? Not oh yeah. Hot? Okay. Oh yeah. Well, when it's original, when I put it on and it's 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 liquefied, it's very hot. And I have accidentally put my finger in the pot of wax. It it, it hurts. But um, just give it a minute, and it it's, it cools right back down again. So this will kind of soften those bright colors a little bit. And I'm just being very careful because I know that that is very hot. So see that just adds a little more interest and a little more depth to it. This is a great deal like the pores that we see a lot of times with the acrylic paints, but you're doing it all in wax, which just adds another level to it. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a um, entirely different technique, mm -hmm. but the way the, the movement is is Definitely. very similar. So um, yeah, I, I've had that. I've heard that before. Yeah. Um, another cool technique we could do, we could do an image transfer. Um, uh, let me try this. So I like a lot of butterflies and dragonflies. 
and let's see, we'll warm it up just a little bit. And I'll, I just printed out this little clip art of, of the butterfly and I'll just put it right on here. And I will rub, rub, rub. So I'll just rub that image on to the warm wax. And right now what's happening is the warm encaustic medium is releasing the ink from the paper. This is from a toner-based um, printer. And there's little bits of wax that cover the ink in toner-based printer, and it, it melts the wax that uh, encapsulate the ink, and then it releases the ink onto the wax. But we're going to have to let that sit until it, it cools off for a few minutes, and then eventually what you'll get is a cute little image, like I made this Christmas ornament, uh, just some gnomes I found online, and I just did a little clip art on there, and it released the image right onto the wax. So I had a little Christmas ornament. That's such a clever idea. Um, let me get a little water, and I'll show that up. Oh, that's still a little bit warm, so I'm going to let that uh, cool off for a couple more minutes. Um, but, you know, like, so this is, this is just a little test piece that I had tried. Um, just, I was testing out different colors. And, oh, let's see. You, there's so many different techniques you could do. And I have a million colors. So, this one kind of reminds me of, like, a, um, almost like a, a crazy sunset. So, maybe I'll try to um, add a few more bright orange colors to this sunset, and then I could create like a mountain uh, range below, something like that. So I'll add just a hint, a little more orange, red. And maybe even a, just ever so, soft of a golden sunset and this is more of a translucent orange very translucent and maybe some of that pink that I love so much so you can see you can just add colors 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 on here and I think I will just blast it with the torch and see what comes out here. I just love it the way you put the random colors of wax on it that has absolutely no rhyme or reason as to its placement, and then it becomes this. Yeah, and, and you know, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Uh, it really comes together at the end when you put those, fi those final touches on it is when it really comes together. Uh, like an image transfer or maybe I'll take an oil painting or oil paint and, and paint on a sketch of some uh, You know pine trees or something. I like a lot of pine trees or cypress trees I'll paint on there and that really ties it together. Let's not minimize though your knowledge and expertise that you bring to this because it looks like you're just kind of putting various splashes of paint in various places, but you have specific colors that you were putting down. 
And that had to have also come from the knowledge of how those colors work together. Well, sure. Um, you know, when you look at a sunset, um, there's not just one color in a sunset. There, are, There's many gradations of orange or blues. Twilights has blues and greens and purples. And so, you know, you're, you're going to want to show all of those colors. And maybe there's just a hint of gold. And so you want to put in a little hint of gold at the end. And, and it's all those little touches that really come together and make it something special. Yeah. Are you going to do a transfer on that, or are we going to go back to your regular transfer? Let's go back to the original one. It's Yep, that should be nice and cool. So what happens is, I've, I've put the image of the butterfly on there, and hopefully it's cooled down enough. Take my fingers, make them wet, and just kind of rub off, and There, the image of the butterfly is being released. And here we go. And there's the image of the butterfly. And I get those little bits of paper off. And there we go. We have a butterfly. You know, it seems like this is one of the unique aspects of your work and it seems amazing that you would think about taking something like this and going through this process to make this work yeah it, you know it's really fun um there's so many different techniques that you can do um and i have just found i i always i love the etherealness and the floatiness and cloudiness of encaustic paintings, but I always feel like there needs to be some sort of um, focal point or concrete image and some hard line against setting it aside from the cloudiness of it all. Um, that's just me. And that's how I work. And, and I just like one image to look at. And then the encaustic medium just kind of um, is a nice setting for it. But I like a nice definite focal point. So here we have this nice, you know, um, butterfly. And I would add, this wouldn't be my final painting. I would add a lot more to it. Um, something else I could do. Um, well, what I would normally do, I would scrape off. So, scrape off the sides to finish it. So, what I'm going to do now, you can see that nice, um, the rounded edge and all the drips. Uh, I like to clean it off. So I'm going to scrape off, and that gives you a nice, clean edge. That comes off a lot easier than I thought it would. Well, it's very warm still. So, yeah, it's very warm, so it comes off really easy. But that gives me a nice, sharp edge. And then something I would do is I would add a little shimmer to it. So when we talked about before removing removing the wax, it has to be heated beforehand in order to take it oh, off. Oh yeah. Um, a finished piece is going to be um, it's 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 hard. It's 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 you you cannot you know put your fingernail in it. A finished piece that has been fully cured. It's it's a tough medium. So, like this one I finished oh, probably a couple of years ago, and you can see there's many, many layers underneath, and there's the butterfly again, which I love. I put a little gold, um, gold leaf on there, but it is a tough surface. I could not just scrape the sides. I would have to re-melt it, and I can re-melt it years later. Um, 
Um, but that's good to know in terms of its resiliency. Yeah. So you don't have to worry about it getting scratched or no. anything like no. that. You want to protect it from really warm sunlight um, and also any extreme temperatures, freezing or really hot. Uh, but you would do that with any piece of, of art anyways. So, um, yeah, but you, if I wanted to rework this, I could rework it. But you can tell this one, I put a little dark shimmery edge to it. And so I think that's usually how I finish off my works. So I think I'll try and do that again here. Here's a nice metallic, gold metallic shimmer. So I'll just put a little bit on the edges here. That just makes it a little extra special, right? Oops. Gives it a little extra interest. And so I would normally go all the way around. And then you just finish it off with just a whisper of the twerk. Just turn it down real low. And I'm going to finish that off. I'm also going to seal the uh, image transfer that I did. Monica, this has been such a fabulous process, and I really thank you for joining us today and demonstrating this for us. Thank you for stopping by. It's been fun. So before we end this, would you tell us if you've got any shows or tours that you are participating in, and if people want to get in contact with you, what's the best way? Oh, thanks. Um, well, I always participate in the Plaster Arts Tour in every November, so that's the best way to see my work. Um, if not, um, you can always follow me on Instagram, Monica's Encaustic Art. How wonderful. And thank you again so much. Thank you. We also want to thank you for tuning in to Auburn Community Television in this episode of Meet the Artist. We hope that by watching this program, or possibly going on some of the tours, that you are learning that you have the artists that are all around you in this community. Who knows? Maybe you have discovered that you have an artist living just around the corner, or maybe you've discovered the artist within. Hope to see you again.